Hi guys, today we are going to talk about different types of Dracaenas. Uh, now there are approximately 113 of them that have specific names, but there are approximately over 200 different types of Dracaenas. Uh, but they act quite... Um, the same. The same. All of them. So. Uh, we are going to tell you how to take care of them and what to think about when you buy them. And as usual, we're going to divide this up into four parts. You have the purchase, the planting, the placement and the care of the plant. So if you want to skip forward, you can. So to start things off, we have the purchase. And uh, when you're going out to buy a Dracaena, as I told you, there are a lot of types of the Dracaenas. So what are you going to look, of, look after? Well, first of all, you have to go and see what type of Dracaena you prefer. So uh, there are types that have a little bit of a wider leaf and there are types that have smaller leaves and even smaller leaves than this one. So actually you should maybe ask your wife before you buy something and uh, make sure that she is on the same page as you are. But when you have decided for a Dracaena, uh, it's time to buy it. And what do you have to look about? Well, you have to look for the first thing you always do when buying a green plant is that you have to knock off the pot and look at the roots. Especially when it's a, a kind of plant like this that has three separate stems. Uh, and um, these are actually, we are now in Sweden, as you might hear from my accent, but here in the northern part of uh, Europe, uh, usually it's in Holland or in Germany or in uh, Denmark that you have the growers that grow these types of plants. But the Dacinas are not grown from, uh, from the soil up in, uh, at the grower. They're actually sent from South America and they send the stems, only the stems, on containers. So they can load maybe 1,000 in one container of these stems. And when they arrive at the growers, they plant the stems and see to it that one side gets the roots and the other side gets the leaves. Uh, so that's what the growers are doing. But when they do that, they plant it maybe with one stem or two stems or like this one with three stems. So they are separated from each other. So it's very important when you buy a Dracaena that you check the roots because you don't want to get home and knock off the pot to plant uh, your Dacaena and it all just falls apart. It needs to have a good root system that binds all of the soil together. Now let's see if I have one here. It should look like this, where you have a complete root system that is binding all of the soil together. Now this makes it easier for you when you're going to plant it, but it also means that it's a good quality plant. You have a uh, a big root system so that you don't have to consider the roots when you start to water the plant. Okay, the other thing you have to look at are the leaves of the plant. We can take this one that has two stems as you can see. Uh, and when you look at the leaves you should be looking at two things. You should be looking at the newest leaves on top of each stem and you should be looking at the leaves that are the oldest, uh, that means the, the, the first leaves that came out uh, from the stem. Uh, and looking at the new leaves, they should be green and lush and shouldn't have any, anything wrong with them. Uh, if we take this one, for example, this is a Dracaena fragrance Janet Lind, it's called. And uh, as you see, it has a quite a dark green leaf on it. 
and the new leaves on top should look exactly the same as the other ones. If the new leaves have a different shade of green than the other leaves on the plant, maybe you should put that aside and choose another plant because it could mean that this plant has some type of problem. It could mean that it has a bug problem or it could mean it has a uh, problem with the nutrients uh, down by the roots. So choose one that has the same type of green in the new leaves as in the other parts of the plant. Uh, when you look at the leaves that has first come up from the stem, uh, they should first of all be there. You should see that no one in the greenhouse or in uh, where you're going to buy this plant has gone and drawn off the smallest of these leaves. Uh, because that could also indicate that there is something wrong with the, the, um, the plant. And usually it means that they have not got water correctly or they may, may even have got too much water uh, when they are standing at the grower or when they are standing at where you're going to buy it. So check the, the old leaves and check the new leaves. Now another thing when you buy a Dracaena is that you could actually find one, find Dracaena that has this and it's on top of the edge of the, the leaves you have a little bit of a br brown, uh, brown shade uh, where the, the top of the leaf, leaf has died. Uh, and this usually is not a problem. This is what we call a mechanical uh, injury. Uh, which means it could have been standing somewhere where you have a draft where uh, some uh, air system has made, made it windy inside and it's, it's been standing like this or it could have been standing in the outside edge of the growers where they uh, bicycle or walk or maybe even drive through and touch the leaves a little bit like this. this makes this happen. Uh, the edge of the leaf gets a little bit brown uh, but you can easily just take this away by cutting it off with a sharp scissor like that. It shouldn't have this brown on all the plant of course then choose another one but you don't have to be afraid if one or two leaves have this problem. One more thing you can look when you're buying the plant is uh, the different types of Dracaenas have different types of stems or the color of the stems can be different. As you can see here this is a Dracaena Ricci and this is a Dracaena Sinto uh, and the Sinto has a green stem all the way from the bottom to the top whereas the Ricci has a a brown stem instead with a little bit of green inside. This is just the type of Dracaena and is never a problem. Uh, you, you could think that the brown stem is, uh, is something that there is something wrong with it but it's not. It's supposed to be like this so the stem color is not in your choice of Dracaena. Okay? And also you can look at each stem that the plant has and see how many stems come out of the top. Um, and this is actually where they have cut the, the stem in South America and then loaded, loaded it on the containers and sent them to, for, example, for instance, Holland. Um, and then when they plant it, it's going to start growing and if there is only one new stem coming out of the main stem, then maybe it's not a good quality Dracaena. So it should be at least two branches or preferably three, four or maybe up to five different branches. And the more you get, it's an indication of the quality of the Dracaena. Now the last thing you have to do when you've bought a, your Dracaena is to take it home with you. Uh, and there are a couple of things you have to consider. Uh, 
the Dacinas are all of them really sensitive to cold weather. So, and especially if you have a climate that is below zero degrees Celsius. It only takes a couple of seconds in, this, in, in minus degrees to um, get injuries on the leaves. And you will actually notice this when you got home and you have started to plant your plant and uh, when you're finished you can see on the, the leaves that they uh, it's like they have lost their glow. They're starting to decompose from the inside and that is the cold weather that has actually exploded the cells in the leaves and it takes a couple of maybe hours before you see it. So see to it that they wrap it really uh, good in plastic or in uh, paper or something before you take it home and also take it home inside of a warm car if it's cold outside. Also take a notice of how windy it is outside when you're going to take it home because in a very windy weather you could actually break one of the stems uh, on, on, um, uh, when you take it home. But if it's a sunny day, no wind and uh, it's warm and nice you can even take it on your bicycle and take it home without having to worry. And you can also put it outside uh, in, win in, in the summertime if you have a warm temperature. They actually like that. So you got your Dracaena home with you and it's time to plant it somewhere. Uh, now, this is important. Like I told you before, you have already checked how the roots look on your Dracaena. And if it looks like this, it's okay. You can repot this in a bigger pot. You can plant it in a bigger pot. However, if it doesn't look like this and you don't have all these roots, you only see a little bit of roots uh, in the soil, there, you, there, it's actually better if you leave it in the inside pot that it arrives in for a couple of weeks or months. Uh, just start to water it like it is and uh, check it now and again, maybe every two weeks, knock it off and see if you've gotten this root system yet. Um, because the, there is a risk if you try and repot this plant and it doesn't have all these roots, you're actually going to harm the plant more than you're going to help it. So leave it in this pot if it doesn't have a nice root system. But if it looks like this, you should, when you get home, repot it. And of course you're going to repot it in a pot you like that fits your home uh, and where you're going to place it. Uh, what you have to consider is that when you repot it, use a bigger pot than the one it stands in when you buy it and see to it that you somehow raise it from the bottom of the pot so that the roots never stand in water. So when you water it, there should never be water standing near the roots because it's very sensitive to this and it's going to die. So it, an easy way is uh, for you to, uh, for an example, just take some gravel from uh, your garden or something and put this in the bottom of the pot and then plant the, the, the Dracaena in the pot so you know that it's raised from the bottom. However, it's of course even better if you plant it in a self-watering pot uh, or in pumice. Now we have videos both about self-watering pots and about pumice if you don't know what that is. So look at the links in the description below. Tack Philip means thank you in Swedish. When you have planted or repotted your Dracaena, it's time to put it somewhere in your home. Uh, and there are of course a couple of things you need to know and consider. Um, the first thing is that 
the Dulcina is actually a very good plant for you, uh, which means it actually cleanses the air in your home. And it cleanses it from uh, different types of particles that are not good for you. For an example, particles that exist in, uh, in wallpaper uh, and in... Um, 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 oh, how do you say? Mölle. Mölle. Paint. Paint. Paint on your walls. And also in, uh, in the fabrics you have uh, in uh, your sofa or your uh, chair. Um, it actually cleanses these bad for you particles, uh, which means you should have it somewhere where you are spending a lot of time in your home. For an example, in your living room. And when you put it there, you need to consider uh, the light source. You should never put it in a southern window that gets a lot of sunlight because the dracenas are going to get burnt by sunlight. Uh, you're going to see this quite quickly uh, where the green in the leaves are shifting towards a more yellowish tone and then it's going to get all brown and die for you. So never in full sunlight. But if you want to put it in a window that has a lot of sunlight, just put it a little bit further into the room so you don't get the direct sunlight. It gets a lot of light, but not the direct sunlight. Uh, but the best placement in your home is usually in the west or in the east. So you get a little bit of sunlight maybe in the morning or in the evening, but not all day. It needs light, but it doesn't need that much light. And it's actually like this. If you take this type of Dracaena, which is a Dracaena fragrance, a uh, Dracaena Cinto, um, which has a uh, lighter type of green in the middle of the, of the leaf, if you put this really, really dark, the, the lighter parts here are going to disappear and uh, all of the plant is going to be all green, dark green, almost like this one. This is the Dracaena fragrance Janet Lind, which is actually the plant, uh, one of the plants they have used to create this type of plant. So if it stands very, very dark, this type of plant is going to look like this after a while. So it needs a little bit of light to continue looking the way it did when you bought it. Inside, you all, we often get a problem in the winter. And that problem is that when you put on your radiators, uh, you uh, get a humidity that is quite low indoors. And this is a problem for the Dracaena. It, it can survive it, but it means that it has a bit of a struggle during the winter time indoors. Uh, and you, you can help it by uh, spraying it with water, but if you want to help it like that, you have to actually spray it almost every day. Um, you could spray it and uh, you can get it and dry the water off of the leaves, which actually also dries off the... Um, ooh, how do you say that in English? Uh, dumb. Dust. Dust. Dries the dust. Thank you, Philip. Dries the dust off of the plant as well. The last thing, last thing you need to consider when placing your Dacina is uh, the uh, closeness to a window. Because if you have a window that is open quite a lot, you can get a lot of draft. And the Dracaena doesn't like drafts. Uh, like I showed you before, it can get mechanical damages on the top of the leaves. Uh, but it can also get other uh, damages to it uh, from the cold outside. So always consider when you place it, if you have a window that you're going to be opening and closing a lot, during the different parts of the year. And if you need to open the window in winter time, see to it that you move your Dracaena first. So you have bought your Dracaena, you have planted it, and you have placed it somewhere in your home where you want it to be. Now it's time to start taking care of the plant. And this is 
one of the easiest plants to take care of. Uh, it doesn't need that much of water. Uh, actually, you have to always use your finger with this plant because it needs to dry up in between watering. So use your finger, just feel the soil or the pumice or whatever you've planted it in to see that it's completely dry before you give it some water again. If you do this, it's going to be very uh, good. <laughs> uh, and uh, how often should you then water it? Well, that depends on how long it takes for the water to dry out in the pot. So use your finger uh, and it also depends on how large your pot is that you have planted it in. If you have a small pot and a small two-stem dracaena, you're going to have to water that more often than if you have a multi-stem dracaena like this planted in a large urn or something. That is of course going to have to have a lot more water. But use your finger and feel so that it's really dry. Uh, in the summertime, and by that I mean uh, from maybe April until September, October, add some nutrients to the water when you water it. Uh, and uh, you can do that maybe once or twice a month. So even if you're only watering it once a month and you're using a self-watering system, you have to use the nutrients and add the nutrients every time. But if you, have it, if you don't have it planted in pumice or a self-watering system, maybe you're watering it once a week or once every two weeks, then you have to add water maybe uh, every other time. Uh, add nutrients every other time. Okay? And uh, after a while, your dacena is going to start to grow. Uh, and if it's standing in a place where it uh, feels very good, it can grow quite fast. And usually in your home you don't have as much space that you can just let it grow and be maybe uh, three meters tall. So you need to cut it. Uh, and that's also a very simple thing to do. Now, oh. And I'm going to do that for you. Uh, let's see, we can, uh, we can cut this one. Uh, now let's just think a little bit that this has begun, this has gotten to be too big for you and you need to cut it. Then you look at the stem that has gotten too big, like this, and you just take a scissor that is very sharp or uh, well, any type of scissor actually that you have at your home and then you cut it in between the different leaves like this uh, and you can cut it anywhere on the stem you can cut it all the way down here or you can cut it like I did where you have leaves going out from the sides it doesn't matter because if the plant uh, is well taken care of has nutrients for the roots and for the plant and you water it regularly it's going to remount uh, which means it's going to get some new stems from where you have cut it and uh, if you're really lucky you can get maybe three or four new stems from that point or you could get just one and if you only get one then perhaps you should consider moving the plant to somewhere else where it might get a little bit more light or uh, where, it not, where it's not standing in as much sunlight. Uh, just check out the placement parts of this video. Uh, but you don't have to throw away the part that you have cut off. You can just peel off some of the leaves, like this, and just leave a couple of leaves at the top. Now this stem could be this long, uh, it really doesn't matter. Leave a couple of leaves, and then you can put this, either you can put it in a cup of water and see when it gets roots from uh, down here. And when it's gotten a lot of roots, you can replant it in soil or pumice. Uh, or 
you could actually just sho shove it down, so to speak, into the soil, like this. Uh, and eight times out of ten is our experience that it's actually going to regrow by just doing like this. So um, you can try that the first time, and if that doesn't work, then just put it in some a cup of water first and let the roots start to grow before you put it in soil. All of the dracaenas uh, can flower. Um, and so the, the, the standard dracaena is actually called dracaena fragrance. And that is because of the flowers it can get. Uh, it has quite a strong odor, or it can have quite a strong odor, uh, which usually means that you cut off the flowers when they arrive. Now, they usually don't arrive for maybe six to eight years uh, in your home. So it, it's not going to flower that often. Uh, but there is a problem other than the smell of the flower. The flower is so nutrient demanding that it's actually going to suck the nutrients out of all of the plant to make the flower. So our advice is that when you see a flower on a dracaena, cut it off directly as soon as you can. Even if you like the smell of the flower, just cut it off anyway, because it's going to suck all the nutrients in the plant up. So the risk is quite, quite large that after it has flowered over, the plant is actually going to die. Now you could try and give it some extra nutrients when you know that it's flowering, uh, but our experience is that even then you will have a problem with the plant after it has flowered out. So never, my, our, our opinion is that you never save the flower on a dracaena. You cut it off as soon as you can see it. Otherwise, you endanger the whole plant. Now the last thing I want to tell you about the dracaenas is uh, that they can, they can actually get uh, some vermin on them, some pests. And usually it's some sort of spider mites. Uh, now the spider mites are difficult because they are so small that you're not going to see them. Uh, and uh, in Swedish we call it spinkvalsta. Uh, you will see it, but when you see that there is a problem, they are, there are so many, there are millions of these spider mites on it. Uh, and usually it's gone quite far when you can actually see it with your eyes. Uh, and uh, the spider mites, they weave a sort of web, so it almost looks like uh, you've gotten some uh, spider that has been uh, living inside of the plant. But it's not, it's, uh, it's the spider mites. Uh, and uh, if it's gone that far that you can see these uh, spider webs on it, you need to do something radical. You need to buy some form of pesticide to take care of it. The first thing you need to do is take some sort of microfiber cloth, soak it in some water and actually just dry off every leaf and try to get all of the leaves as clean as you can. And then you use the pesticides and, and usually it's some form of spray that you spray on the plant. Now check the pesticides really careful that it's going to work on spider mites. Because not all pesticides works on, work on spider mites. They work on quite a lot of different type of pe uh, pests, but not all of them works on spider mites. So check the bottle and then you spray it on and usually you have to spray it a couple of times to get this off. Now, it's quite a long process to get the spider mites to die or leave. So the best thing is to try and prevent this from happening. Uh, and that is actually the, the, the most, the, the time of the year where you're going to have uh, the largest risk of getting spider mites is in the winter time when you have a low humidity in your home. And 
as I said before, the Dracaenas like to dry out quite a lot before you give them some new water. But if you have very low humidity at home, that is not the way to go in the winter. You need to give it uh, a little bit of water all the time. Because if it gets dry in the roots and you have a very, very low humidity, you're going to get spider mites. And how, how so, so by preventing that is actually by giving a little bit more water uh, and maybe checking it more often to see that the soil is not dry yet, it's not wet, but it's not dry, it's actually just a little bit cold then it's time to give some water again before it gets too dry. If you do that, you're not going to get the problems with the spider mites. And also, you can always check the new leaves on top of the stems. Because the first thing the spider mites are going to do is going to attack the new leaves. They are the good leaves, the, the uh, they are the hamburgers of the plants. They, they're all going to attack the, the new fresh leaves first. So by looking at those leaves and checking them and always seeing that they have the same type of green color that the, all of the plant has. Uh, and as soon as they start to get a little bit yellow or you see that something is happening to the new uh, leaves on top then you have to act. And the first thing you do is take your microfiber cloth with some water and try to take, uh, take away and uh, clean the, the, the flower or clean the, the plant. Uh, and you can also buy some sort of pesticide and spray it before it gets too much. So keep an eye on the new leaves of the plant and you can maybe prevent all this from happening. You can also have a bit of a luck because the spider mites actually have some uh, enemies in, uh, in, uh, in natural life and that is some sort of a predatory mites. So if you're lucky the spider mites are going to draw some of these predatory mites to the plant and they are going to eat up the spider mites. Now the predatory mites are not dangerous for the plant. They, they never harm the plant. So when all the spider mites are gone and they, they have eaten all the spider mites, the, the predatory mites are going to go away again or die. Um, so you could also look for these predatory mites in your shops at home to see if you can buy a biological and better way of taking care of the spider mites than using some sort of sort of aerosol um, can. Okay. Now that is all we have about the uh, Dracaenas and like I told you in the beginning of the film there are a lot of different types of Dracaenas but all of them can be managed uh, by taking these small steps that we have shown in this video. Now if you have any questions, if you think I've missed something, please don't hesitate to write to us below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, until next time, hi